and welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me is Court Winsett. Good day, sir. Good day to you after Thanksgiving. It's no longer Thanksgiving, it is the week after, right? Yes. I said good day. I said good day. Oh, lordy. Okay. <laughs> so, we had that episode, uh, episode, sorry guys, I can't talk. We had that episode a couple episodes ago. How many times can I say episode in a sentence? Um, that we went through and ranted about gas stations and like the whole psychology about it and how I always am running out of gas and waiting until the last minute. So it kind of spurred a conversation in our office about the whole electric cars. And put a disclaimer out there, this episode we are not for, we are not against. We are just going to kind of shoot the bull, whatever we want to do, and talk about electric cars, kind of their history, and just kind of, you know, talk about it. See see what's going on. And we'd love for, as always, you guys to comment and send us messages about your thoughts on electric cars. I mean, for or against electric cars, I, the idea that the electric car has been, uh, I guess, politicized to the point that we need to, to make a disclaimer that we are neither for nor against electric cars seems a bit silly to me. Sorry. Well, I mean, all I'm saying is, can we just skip this whole electric car thing and go straight to having the jets and vehicles? Like, I'd love a flying car. Yeah. I want I want my nuclear-powered uh, uh, DeLorean with the Mr. Fusion on the back. That's all I'm saying. Although you think about it, I mean, I don't know where you live, but around here, when it's raining in Memphis, you know everyone forgets how to drive. Heaven forbid if it actually starts snowing, then no one knows how to drive. So if they can't drive a vehicle that we've all been driving on roads for forever, how are they going to handle a flying car? Uh, the, they wouldn't be on the road. So that would help. But it still, it, it would it nope. would happen. Nope. We do have a town full of FedEx pilots. So I feel like the majority <laughs> of the population would be able to do it just fine. That is true. Okay, so, you know, gas prices are crazy. And I think a lot of people think, well... Let's get a vehicle that doesn't have to use gas. And so they think that that's a better option. And so there's kind of, you know, it's, there's a cost and you think about it, there's ways to reduce cost. And some Americans think it is turning to electric. About 900,000 electric vehicles were on the road in 2018. Sales were up to 40% in 2019, but is it worth buying? What does it actually mean to go electric? And, uh, you know, the statistics out there are that the electric cars are going to surpass gas cars by 2036. Mm. Okay, so 2036, that's, you know, yes, that's not that far away, but that's still not, you know, in just a couple of years. Listen, let me tell you, okay, think about it this way, Katie uh, and Cameron. Um, uh, 2036, that's that's basically... It's not even. It's it's not. It's not your daughter's sixteenth birthday. It's your daughter's quinceanera. You, you assuming you had like if you had a daughter today, it's less than sixteen years away. And let me tell you how quickly <laughs> your daughter's zero to sixteenth birthday will go. It goes by <laughs> ridiculously <to> fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what is an electric car? It's any type of car that can be powered by electricity or Mr. Oh, Fusion. That makes sense. Um, they, you know, they can be all electric or they can be hybrid. Of course. And hybrid is that they do have, take gas, they but they gasoline, also are electricity. but they also have a battery. Um, purely electric run completely from a battery or fuel cell. Drivers can plug them into external electric power sources. Hybrids, again, take the gas and electricity and don't need to be plugged in. Some of them don't. So, Some of them do. Like there, there, there were a couple, and, and I don't know, I don't know how prevalent they are, but there were a couple that were like extraordinarily long range hybrid, and yeah, you, you had to actually charge those. But I'm not sure if any of those are still made. Anyway, I mean, I remember it was such a big deal when these first started coming out in Shelby Farms, which is a big uh, p- park here. They started putting in the charging stations, and that was such a big deal. But I just, I don't know. I picture these people just like pulling out this long cord out of their vehicle, trying to like plug it in. I personally have never seen an electric car in like the charging. Have y'all? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, they've I'm got charging out with the wrong people. <laughs> they, they've got charging stations at the uh, at the airport. Uh, they've got they, they're becoming more prevalent even in this city. There are uh, Shelby Farms. Yeah, um, and uh, not only that, but like I pulled up to my parents' house one day, and my brother drives an electric car, and he had it plugged into the house. You so know, does he but, like it? Well, I mean, it's it's he he used to drive a hybrid, and now I think he drives a fully electric. So yeah, he he must like them. He must. Is it a Tesla? 
No, it is not a Tesla. <laughs> oh, man. So my husband, who's in the car industry, um, I kind of was asking him on a road trip. I said, you know, what is your thoughts on the electric cars and all of that? And he goes, well, again, all of the dealerships are giving themselves these long windows of when they're going to start really fully producing it because there's still such a big debate of those that will always have their gas cars. I mean, you sit there and think about all the big NASCAR races, all of that stuff. They're still in gas cars for the most part. Um, And, you know, his comment was, we hear all these health studies out there that says, you know, sleeping with your cell phone by you or using your cell phone all the time is bad for you. And so if we're driving in a vehicle that is nothing but a big battery that's running it, is that not like us sitting in a microwave? No, it is absolutely not. Is it not? Because microwaves are different. I mean, like specifically as it relates to microwaves, your car will not be putting off the microwaves, even if you're sitting inside the car. So no. Okay. Well, moving on. Let's settle that. <laughs> okay. Daniel, you heard it from court. He says no. So the uh, the best 2021 electric cars for mileage range. You want to read that list, Court? Um, sure. Why not? Uh, okay. <laughs> so why don't I start with number seven? That works. Number seven is the Volvo XC40. Number six is the Porsche Taycan. Is it Taycan or Taken? Or Taycan. Taken or Toucan. Liam Neeson. It's T A Y C A N. I don't know. I've seen one of these on the road and it looks pretty sweet. I'm just <laughs> saying. Um, the Audi, the e tron, the Ford Mustang Mach E. Now, this that's is pretty one sweet. That I, yeah. I want this car it looks hardcore. Nice. Nissan Leaf. That's what my brother drives. I mean, that's um, fitting. A Leaf electric, you know, yeah, environmentally yeah, safe. I'm sure that's why they named it that. It's, yeah. It's, Some, it's somebody free. on the marketing team was yeah, smart. Absolutely. <laughs> the Hyundai Kona. And, of course, the Tesla Model S, X, and 3. So, I guess they get the they get all, of them. all the same range. Yeah. Now, mark my words, in 2022, the top electric vehicle will be from a company called Rivian. Have you heard of Rivian? I have heard of Rivian. Oh, I have not. They have a brand new pickup truck. It is amazing. Mm-hmm. So, Rivian's already being sued by Tesla because Rivian pulled some of their engineers with some trade secrets. But man, that truck is awesome. So you hear, heard it here first, Rivian. Already all this drama around it. Gosh. Mm. Okay, so electric, good or bad? Mm. The technology of choice for eco-friendly car buyers because they have no emissions tied to the operations. They can be powered clean, renewable energy. But then again, and this is a, my husband who's in the industry, he says, but most of the time, all, every car that's coming out nowadays is doing everything possible to have no emission. They're making sure that they're making these cars to do the automatic shutoffs. And I mean, if you've ever been in one of those cars that you're just driving and then it just kind of shuts off and then it starts again. Okay, yeah. Let's let's talk about that for a second. Just, <laughs> just a little side note here. Okay. I see those. I have driven one of those as a rental. I've never owned one, but I have rented one that did that. And when you're sitting at the stoplight and it just stops... Uh-huh. And then you you take your foot off the brake and and like or you can even lift it slightly off the brake. Like if you don't push the brake all the way in, it won't stall. Or if you push it all the way in and it stalls, but then you take it slightly off of the brake, then it'll start back up. When I get in my car at night and and turn the key to crank it, it goes. <laughs> 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 what, can you imagine if they had some sort of automatic stop at the stoplight and my car was trying to start back up every time I... <laughs> that would be terrible. You know, electric vehicles are so quiet now. I'm pretty sure Tesla does this, that they ha- it, the car has to produce a fake motor noise because it's dangerous in parking lots. It's so quiet, pedestrians don't know it's there. Mm-hmm. So it has to produce a fake noise. Great. Electric cars are going to be popular and then it's going to be that we've hit a bunch of people in parking lots. They're stealthy. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, there we go. Sneaking up on people. Yeah, I mean, apparently the automatic shutoff and stuff is for a lot of heavily heavily populated areas like New York and LA where they're sitting in traffic for long periods of time Mm -hmm. and it's really supposed to help. But um, I do know some people that have bought vehicles and they have that and they've uh, creatively figured out how to get that to shut off and not happen every time they drive (laughs) i mean as long as the as long as the feature works and my car starts back up at every light then i'm i'm fine with it i've just i'd be worried that later on down the road when the car starts having trouble starting that it's going to be an issue but 
Okay, so they tend to cost, electric cars tend to cost more up front, but then on the back end can cost less per mile. And I, I mean, think you probably will see that the uh, as, as more, more electric vehicles are mass produced, you'll probably see that upfront cost drop. It may not ever be quite as low as, as the uh, fuel consuming car, yeah. but you know, I could be wrong, but you know, just generally speaking, mass production tends to bring prices down. Yeah. And a lot of these points, it's, um, you know, you can argue both sides of it, depending on if you're like team gas or team electric. Um, Again, why are there teams? <laughs> You know, you know what? I, they're just they, there are. I mean, because this has become an environmental thing. Yeah, but and why do we why do we have to fight about it? Like, yeah, listen. You know what? I would probably have. This if is I, coming from me and you who fight and debate about like our favorite movie or actor or like which you know drinking at Thanksgiving or not. Like, yeah, come on. Uh, and the answer to that is yes. <laughs> um, but I would have if I had my choice, I'd probably have a, a, a gasoline powered car and an electric car. The fact of the matter is you still can't, I mean, I drive, I, t I take drives that are up to like 1200 miles and I haven't heard of a electric vehicle yet that can go. That, that, that is my thing is I do not think it's for everyone. It may be your, like your everyday vehicle, but okay. So let's think about me. I never remember to fill up my car until it's like game time like i have got to find somewhere how is that gonna work if i forgot to plug it in oh you just you you've got a plug in your in your garage and you, you plug it in. okay and you get home. so there's a point you got to plug in your garage think about it you've got to make sure your house has that ability to do that if you're living in an older home you may have to have that cost to make sure you're able to charge your car no i mean like the plug has a special end on one end that fits your car on the other end, it's just a normal plug. You it's say normal, but like I know I lived in an older house in Germantown and I, I got a new dryer and had to get a whole converter thing because the the outlet, I I, I don't know. The was... dryer plugs are different, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> Back to cars with a Tesla. If you if you do like a road trip on your map, it, it will mark out where all the charging stations are. But keep in mind... How it, long does it take to charge? It takes an hour to get a full yeah, charge. Yeah, yeah, No, 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 So no, you no. have to just sit no. in your car and chill. No, mm. think about road trips cannot be what they are. Like, your trip that you just took, your really oh, yeah. long one... Like, I couldn't have driven to... I, it would have driven me insane if I tried to drive an electric car all the way out yeah, to Oregon. Yeah, you have to plan your stops and figure out, like, where. what are you going to do for an hour? Yeah. And then my question is, and I mean, this is just questions like you think about your phone battery like after some time it starts not performing as well so does that happen with this car and then i mean i guess it's kind of you you're weighing options because your gas guzzling car you know if you don't i don't know i guess there's both sides of it yeah. because you your wear and tear of your car with the gas in it, and if you put bad gas in it so if you plug it up at a sketchy place and it screws up your car but then Okay, again, because I run out of gas all the time. If I was to be on Poplar and ran out of gas, I could call one of you guys to bring me like a can with some gas in it. If I had an electric car, y'all going to bring me a generator? I mean... <laughs> that's true. Like, that's... I just know... I think that they're great, but you have to know your personality. Like, if you are someone who is constantly, like, on the go and doing drives that are outside of the realm of the the length of time that the car can last, the battery life, then it may not be for you. If you're like me and you forget to get gas or forget to charge, I mean, I forget to charge my phone half the time. I don't know. That's I why I can't wear my Fitbit watch anymore because I forget to charge it. Clearly, they're not for me. <laughs> Clearly, you are on team gasoline. I, yeah. I'm all for the gasoline. I'm not taking a. I'm not taking a side on this. I think that's the idea <laughs> that we have to take sides on this is absolutely idiotic. That's my side. My side is you people over there taking sides are being ridiculous. Buy one of each. Well, that's, that's your bullseye. Save it, that for the end. <laughs> but so it's also one of those of like, okay, great. These car companies are making all these electric cars and it's exciting. Well, yes, they're expensive right now. So not a lot of people. But when is it going to hit the point where there's enough people driving it that we're going to have to start having more charging stations? And maybe there is more charging stations, and I'm just not aware of them when I'm driving. There, I mean, they're they're less prevalent down here in the South, where people have made electric cars a political issue. Because um, <laughs> we like Katie our big old. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> but not. but they are. I I mean, especially like on my Wait, cross you really country use drive. A Dodge about I, now? Pass, 
I passed through areas where they were highly prevalent, where where they were where they were everywhere. Um, I, see, I see them everywhere here. They're at Kroger, Best Buy. Yeah, I mean you, they're popping up. But maybe I just have blinders on and I just like yeah. see the gas guzzling vehicles. <laughs> oh gosh! Does a uh, Subaru make an electric vehicle? Has Daniel given you the word um, No, I don't think we have it. I don't know if they have an electric vehicle or not. That is surprising not. because they're very outdoorsy and eco-friendly. Isn't that kind of their, their shtick? Maybe they do. Totally I don't know. I, when, what is? I said it totally is their shtick. All I know is that whenever I've said something to Daniel about like, oh, I like this car. He's like, it's electric. Nope. <laughs> it's, I, I just, I, it's not for me. I mean, maybe convert me one day, but I just, I don't know. I guess I need to start paying attention and seeing where these charging stations are because all I'm thinking about is as if, okay, so as a female, like if I drive late at night, so are these charging stations safe? If I was to stop for an hour on a road trip and charge, I think it just, it, yes, it may be better and it's where I we're still going. Think, I think, I think the biggest drawback right now is the whole distance thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I can't, I can't really argue that, that they're great in a distance, in, in a distance competition with a gasoline vehicle. It's, it's but, actually something called range anxiety, running out of gas, running out of battery. The, so, I mean, that's yeah. the biggest, best Tesla can take you 405 miles. Yeah. That is the biggest battery they offer. Um, yeah, and see, that's not far enough. It's I, not. That's, that's it's not, not far. I'm, I regularly drive, you know, 600 miles. Yeah. So yeah. I, I, need, I, need, I need more. But that's why I would think I would have, I'm, I, I could see having, eventually, I could see having a, like, I can't, I can't afford one car right now, much less two. But, you know, in an ideal world, I could see having, like, an electric having car that I could drive around town um, where things like, you know, uh, having electricity available to you on a regular basis or not as big an issue where yeah. pollution is a bigger issue generally than if you're driving out in the country. Um, so, you know, you drive the electric car in town and then when you've got to go on a road trip, you have a gasoline car that you use to go on the road trip. I mean, what is Bucky's going to do if we stop needing gas stations? I bet They're you, still I bet going to have the cleanest <laughs> yeah. bathrooms in the <laughs> country. That will not change. That will not change. And I bet you they will start getting some electric... Oh. Uh, All of these yeah, charging we'll, stations. we'll probably start seeing that as these big gas stations will start converting. And it'll be, you know, part of it will be electric and part of it will be... The gas pumps. Mm-hmm. And they have to because all the big car companies are already making pledges. In 30 years, we will be completely electric. Yeah. Who said that recently? There was a big car company. I don't know. Maybe Volkswagen. I don't know. Um, there's apparently motion sickness issues as well. The braking and accelerating is not as smooth as a gas-powered car. So some people get motion sickness really? in an electric car. Yeah. Hmm. And then, I mean, this kind of goes in hand-in-hand in hand with those self-driving cars, too, which that... Mm. Don't know about that. There's well, been a supposedly, lot of supposedly what what is it, Cameron? I'm sure you know the exact date. Supposedly in the next couple of years, uh, Apple is going to be coming out with a fully automated, not even going to have pedals or a steering wheel car. Have you have you read about 2025? This? I read yeah. that last night. There you go. Mm. Okay, well, Katie's history lesson. Okay, because I thought this was interesting. Cue the music. I think we've talked about this before. Ford, the car company, mm-hmm. is coming to the Memphis area. Super sight. Blue Oval City, Tennessee. Not yeah. Super Site. What is it called? Super Site. Mega Site? Yeah, Super Site. Su- Maximum Mega Super Site? <laughs> I don't know what y'all are saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, electric, electric cars um, have actually been around for a lot longer than we thought. There uh, was a Facebook post that went around of a black and white image. So, you know, it's true because <laughs> it was on Facebook. A black and white image of the early 20th century truck hooked up to what appeared to be a charging station. The Facebook post was actually right. It's an image dating back to 1917 and depicts the earliest electric vehicle. But the technology has been around prior to that and dating to the 1890s but was lost out of the car market with the rise of gasoline-powered vehicles. Whoa. Yeah. that's I, I was fascinated with this. The earliest prototype for the first electric-powered vehicles were developed in 1830s, 50 years before German engineer Carl Benz. Benz, is that right? B-E-N-Z? Is that how you all say it? Sure. Uh, he patented and then built the gasoline-powered Benz Patent Motor Wagon in 1886. The early models of electric cars were more proof of concept than a viable means of transportation since they use non-rechargeable batteries. Um, The first rechargeable lead-acid battery in 1859 by French physician Gaston 
Plante? Sure. Leads to the first successful electric vehicle made by a chemist, William Morrison. And he's showcased in a city parade in 1888 at the Chicago World's Fair, 1893. It makes me think of Iron Man, like, showing off at the World's Fair. Um, by 1904, electric cars were nearly everywhere, making up one-third of all motor vehicles in New York, Chicago, and Boston. Uh, the environmental historian Erica Schrodenberger... <laughs> Of course, not helping me with these names. Schoenberger. Today. There you go. Um, a professor. Did you say Schrodenberger? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Rosen Gardner. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Then the discovery of crude oil in Texas, 1901, the mass commercial- commercialization of Ford Motor Company gasoline powered Model T brought the electric car buzz to a halt. Ford devised a way of making cars that blew everyone out of the water because of the way he made the cars, the moving assembly line. He owned 96% of the market for inexpensive yet decent cars. He designed the Model T around a gasoline engine. Everyone who is not rich and who wanted a car, the Model T with a gas engine. They bought a Model T. Yes, bought a Model T. (laughs) Um, So going back to Ford. Now Tennessee is the emerging leader in the national scramble to develop electric vehicles and battery productions as states compete to woo multi-billion dollar investments from auto companies pivoting away from the combustion engine. So Ford Motor and South Korea battery maker SK Innovation recently said they plan to develop a large complex to make electric vehicles and batteries in West Tennessee. That is called a mega site, mega. not a super site. A super <laughs> site is an is a, is a, uh, environmental site. A mega site is a, a, a site, basically, that the state designates for economic development. Yeah, and this follows similar <laughs> investments made by General Motors and Volkswagen to add electric vehicle productions at their Tennessee assembly plants. Give me some numbers, Katie. Oh, you want the numbers? What, are we like a financial podcast or something? Five. Yeah. I want the numbers. <laughs> Three, so <sir>. Three. <laughs> okay, so Ford Motor and South Korean, are uh, they're doing $11.4 billion between Tennessee and Kentucky, and about $5.6 billion of that will be in West Tennessee, the Tennessee area. That's a hell of an investment. Yeah, well, and the thing is also they're That's bringing... That's why they call it a mega site. Blue city. Blue Oval City. <laughs> They're also bringing 5,800 jobs to this area, which is huge. Whoa. Anytime that they can bring jobs in, I mean, that's just amazing. So I just thought the history was kind of interesting because it the, uh, the electric cars were around, and then Henry Ford came in and showed his Model T, and everyone's like, Shh, I don't want an electric car. I want the Model T. And then now here we are again. It's kind of like fashion. Everything goes back full circle. Interesting side note. Just a very, very short side story. Um, There was actually back in the 90s, probably, um, late 90s, maybe, um, a car by Saturn that was an electric car, an all-electric car. And uh, it was among the people who bought one, uh, it was very, very popular, but it got absolutely just sort of wiped from the face of the earth, including like its existence. There's a really interesting... um, uh, documentary that I watched probably on on Netflix about like the the making of this vehicle and the disappearance of the vehicle and how and all the conspiracy theories surrounding why did it disappear? So there was actually and it was an all electric car. Um, it's all about timing. Though. Yeah, I mean, I mean that I, when when we started talking about electric cars this time again, I was like, ah, is this going to happen? It's yeah, the General Motors EV one. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, interesting. So, you know, when it started happening again, I was like, is it, is it going to take this time? Is it going to take? And I think the difference is the success that, that Tesla has seen. Um, they they seem to have really sort of put it over the over yeah. the, over the the top in terms of, okay, we can't take this cat. We can't put this cat back in the bag. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, it's something to think about that it would take a big shift to go fully electric where every single person is driving nothing but electric vehicles. That is very far down the line and like you made that comment yes we're in a peak everyone is buzzing about it now but something could shift and everything could go oh no we're not a fan of electric anymore i mean think about how trendy things are and how it switches but you know right now you think about how much is using gas and that there's a lot of things um buses and trucks no that's not gonna be a thing either i mean seriously tesla has already come out with a with a 
you know, a, a, a model of a tractor. Oh, tractor yeah. I know, I know they're working on it. Like, the goal is by 2040 in California to have all their buses and their trucks be fully electric. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I'm thinking about, yeah, okay, cool. If we got everyone in Memphis to drive electric, that's just one small part. You've got to think about all of the vehicles that are on the road. And yes, of course, if everybody's stopping for an hour to charge your, their vehicle, then it's it's the norm instead of, mm -hmm. you know, not. So it's, it's really a, you know, this is a lot of questions of, is it the future or is it not? Is this trendy? Are we going to move this direction? It can't change overnight. Um, so me that's holding on to my gas guzzling vehicle, like I don't have to convert yet. It's okay. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I, I, I genuinely. I, there are obviously a lot of politicians that would like a shift to electric as quickly as possible because they think that it will have a tremendous effect, a uh, positive effect on the environment. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd like, I like personally to sort of divorce what those politicians want and what their, you know, the the, the politicization politicization of the issue. And separate that from just generally what are the benefits of driving an electric versus the benefits of driving a gas. And I think you've got benefits for both. Yeah, and I think it's the personal preference. Like, I don't have anything against it. I just know right now with how they are, it's not for me. But it's the same reason why somebody may be fine with driving a little bitty sedan versus someone who drives a big SUV and... Those two people can't imagine driving the other vehicle. Well, and you know, one of the things uh, you've heard this debate before the 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 removal of a person's independence. There's there have always been debates about why don't we have more buses? Why don't we have more trains, long distance trains, high speed trains here in America? And the answer is always you can't get a person out of their car. You can't. You, you can't get people to give up their vehicle. So, But see, that switch with this newer generation coming up, they weren't even getting their license and the whole true. ride share epidemic and how up until COVID hit, everyone was just Ubering and yeah, lifting everywhere. That's true. And then I think COVID hit and everyone's like, ooh, I don't really want to get in a stranger's vehicle. But I wonder if we're going to bounce back and it's still going to go to... People in you know bigger cities and stuff don't see the need to have a vehicle, and they're just going to ride share. And um, of course, it still kills me that these kids are not even wanting to get their license. They're just fine with you know an Uber driver picking them up. And so it's I guess you're looking at the cost of paying somebody to just come and pick you up whenever you need to versus the maintenance and having to shell out the money for a car. So there's yeah, there's a know, lot going on right now. I don't know any high school students that were heavily using Uber. Um, but all it takes is one of your high school friends having a license and you can all pile in his car. Yeah. Now, college students, on the other hand, I know Uber use was very, very high for, for my kids while they were in college. So, oh, yeah. you know, uh, that's that that was interesting to me because of just sort of what that meant. But then, like you said, boom, COVID. Wah. Yeah, I mean, it's the car situation is always evolving and, you know, SUVs are bad, SUVs are good, you know, electric, ride share, whatever. Um, what's come out that was on several different articles I read, the three really biggest challenges that they see with the electric vehicle, uh, mining and supply chains to support the shift. That is batteries require a lot of minerals and that means mining. A thousand pound electric car requires moving of 500,000 pounds of earth in the course of mining. So that's what they say is challenge one. Challenge two is ensuring the infrastructure to support electric vehicles in the post-gasoline era. So that's a big one for sure. Basically what I guess that point means is charging stations. Yes, right? exactly. Yeah. It's making okay. sure that there are appropriate, like as you drive, you see there's X amount of gas stations on your interstate, making sure that there's those charging stations. And the third challenge is the public. And that is people who buy the cars. How eager are people going to be to jump on this bandwagon and do it? Is it a bandwagon? Is it trendy? Is it not? What is it? I mean, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you two vehicles that I would buy tomorrow, electric vehicles that I would buy tomorrow if I had the money. And that would be the Ford Mustang yep. Mach-E. Yep. That thing is beautiful mm -hmm. and it's fast as lightning and it's charged by lightning too. And then also the... Uh, but does it sound like... I mean, if you're getting a car like that, I want it to just sound... Awesome. I guarantee you it does not sound like you think it sounds. Like, if I'm getting me a 
beautiful, sexy looking sports car, I want it to have that same roar that you expect. I mean, I I genuinely don't care. If it's, Court's going to get this car and then just have a speaker on his shoulder that goes, <laughs> and does the rumble. I, I would, no, I would honestly, I would honestly be <laughs> just like, fine if it was, if it was super silent. I would just be like, oh, I'm going to sneak up on this person. <laughs> and then you're going to hit somebody in the parking lot. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna oh hit. Lord, could y'all imagine a Chick-fil-A? You'd be knocking people Ooh. over. And then the other one is the uh, the electric. I think I brought it up before. The electric uh, Harley Davidson. Uh, I would I would take that that every day and twice on Sunday. Yeah. Um, but I again I would still probably want at least one uh, uh, gasoline vehicle as well. And I'm always going to want a pickup truck. And so in, until somebody comes out with it, and I know that there are a bunch coming, but until somebody comes out with an electric pickup truck, I'm not even uh, considering a. Uh, an electric vehicle before I get my pickup truck. You know? Yeah. Well, and I wonder with like those electric pickup trucks, you know, does the battery wear down faster if you're hauling stuff? Because mm, if you're going to have a truck, you're going to haul stuff. Yeah. So then is that going to kill your battery faster because you've got that extra weight? That does you're it burn more fuel? Does it burn more gas? Yeah. Well, then it probably burns more battery too. Yeah. I mean, let's face it. I'm pretty sure Cam will be the first one out of the three of us to get an electric vehicle. Yes. I, I mean, mean, I don't know. What, well, what is your basis for that? I'm interested. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure he's in some like secret society where he uh, like. <laughs> <laughs> Electric vehicle society. No, but like he's always in the know of all the Apple stuff. And I feel like you're just like in the know with the super secret trendy stuff. So you would. So I'm in the know, but I don't have the money to buy these things. <laughs> That's the thing. I don't. It's going to happen. One day you're just going to roll up with your new electric vehicle. And it's just, we're going to have to. Get a recording of a motor to play because it's going to be so it'll quiet. Just, it'll be silent. All right, where are we going, guys? Okay, you ready to bullseye this and? Uh, yeah, yeah. Let's, uh, let's give everybody uh, their life back. Indeed. Okay, well, so I guess my bullseye. Cameron pretty much called me out on my bullseye at the very beginning. This doesn't have to be a team issue. Um, there are benefits to both types of vehicles. There are obvious. Uh, environmental benefits to uh, an electric vehicle in 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 that it doesn't have the emissions that a gasoline vehicle does, but then there are still questions about what environmental impact an electric ve- vehicle has because of uh, the what goes into the production of an electric vehicle. Because you still have to produce the electricity to charge the electric vehicle. So, you know. Nobody's saying that, I don't think, well, there there are people that are saying that electric vehicles are the be-all, end-all, but I don't think reasonable people are saying that it is the only possible option. I think you have room for both, uh, and I think you probably have room for, for growth of the concept of alternative sources of fuel outside of electricity and petroleum. Um, so, uh, you know... I, don't take, don't, don't, I don't feel like people need to be getting defensive about what they're driving. You know, if you're <laughs> He's driving, looking at me with that, <laughs> if you're driving a massive truck uh, that's jacked up, then all I'm thinking when you pass me is, man, I want one of those. And if you're passing a, if, if you're driving a Tesla, then all I'm pretty much thinking when you pass me is, man, I want one of those. I, you know, let, let's just, let's just chill and drive what's best <laughs> for us. Bullseye question mark. Bullseye <laughs> period. <laughs> I don't know. For when you were saying your bullseye, all I kept picturing was like Thor coming down with his hammer and be like, "Electricity!" <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. My bullseye after that comment that I'm never going to be able to live down now. Your bullseye is Thor. <laughs> Thor. I mean, that's the solution. No. Um. I. I think it's one of those. I definitely have gotten up in a tizzy thinking about this, freaking out about well, what's going to happen? All these gas stations and stuff. And and the reality is, calm down. I'm trying to tell myself that it's going to be a slower process. There's a lot that has to happen before we completely go full electric and get rid of gas cars. It's, you know, it's something out there. We're going to see where it goes. There's a lot of great things happening, but you also have to know what works for you and what doesn't right now with the range anxiety. um, That's definitely a big, important thing for me and, and, you know, potential motion sickness, but also Probably when, you know, Henry Ford came out with the Model T, there was a lot of speculation around that. So we started out with electric, went to Model T. Now we're back to an electric again. It's been off and on around for a long time. So it's nothing new. It's just what's happening right now. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the future brings and 
what happens? Yes. I want my jetpack. I want my flying car. I still have not been given those things. I was promised those before an electric car, and I want them both. Why do you sound like an alien? I don't know. It sort of just came out that way. My, my microphone, I think, is doing weird things today. Right. Okay, well, bullseye. Bullseye, Katie. Ladies and gentlemen, guess what? That was the closing bell. You've made it to the end of yet another episode of the Bullcast Podcast. If you like what you heard and you'd like to hear more, please feel free to use your favorite subscription service to subscribe, and we will beam ourselves directly into your ears every single because Thursday. Because Court's an alien. Um... Uh, we also have Instagram and Twitter handles. You want to see more of us there, you can go to at Bullcast Podcast for both of those. And if you would like to find out more about us, you can check out our website. That's BullcastPodcast.com. There's a little bio for me, Katie, and Cameron. Feel free to read to your heart's content. You can also comment, leave us uh, subject, topic, uh, suggestions, and so forth. And um, we'll be happy to uh, respond if we get something from you. Um, finally, Katie and I work for a place, and actually Cameron too. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Uh, we, we all work for a place called Pickler Wealth Advisors, and if you'd like to find out more about what we do at Pickler Wealth Advisors, what we can do for you, find out more about our amazing team and our excellent boss, David Pickler, then please feel free to go to that website. That's PicklerWealthAdvisors.com. Dot com. Dot com. That's, that's advice. It's advisors with an O. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've given you no homework. Just uh, go go on about your life and, and just sit tight and wait for our next episode next Thursday. For now, I'm Court. I'm Katie. I'm Cam. And we're done here. <laughs> <laughs>